Hi, welcome to the drainage video series. This is a Wisconsin DIY guy. Uh, now that the garage was supported, as far as the foundation goes, it's time to start the, the fret strain project. So I started this project on July 26th. I took the whole week off. It turned out to be the driest week of the summer. The water table had actually fallen below 24 inches, which was awesome because that's how deep I wanted my French drain around the garage to go. I was pretty lucky. The plan was to, well, let's just go over the plan. I got a picture of that. So the plan was to dig a 12 inch deep French drain here into a pit, 24 inch deep around the immediate edge of the garage into the pit, and then take the downspouts into solid and put those into the pit, discharge the pit here in the swamp where it went under the culvert or into the culvert under the bike path and out to the creek over here. I built a rock stream here so the culvert that goes under the driveway didn't create a dam or a lake. It was laking up right here because there's an earthen kind of rise right here. I got rid of all that. Uh, and I also dug a rock stream right here. I had a fixed up this swale in an earlier phase and like the other video showed this is phase one here where all these downspouts were buried around the house and at the end I got it all reseeded regraded raked out I bought like I think like nine yards of dirt to just make this all flatter whatever I put rock mulch around the garage some pretty stuff whatnot so let's get started with the pictures I'm gonna get back out to the directory here and I have a lot of pictures to go through I'm gonna go through really fast I don't want this video to be too long and boring for anybody if you have questions that you want answered about a specific step or picture or whatever just let me know so I started stockpiling my supplies I have a future or another video at the end where we'll show my materials list and my costs so you know, I go look for that I'll also try to put in the description of all these videos. I think there's going to be 20 or 30 videos total. I'll try to say what are the most important five or four, five, six videos if you just want to get a good overview of how this project went. Uh, prior to July 26, I started having supplies show up, like my dirt bin. I ended up using two 20 yard bins. I could only fill them to 15 yards because of weight rolls. My excavator showed up, Toro Dingo. Uh, that turned out to be too small, so I got that for a week, and then the next weekend I got a Vermeer 935. <clears throat> Lining up all my stuff here, supplies, like a, in the perimeter French drain around the yard, I put round rock. So I used inch and a half round rock like French drain man says to use, but around the 24 inch deep French drain around the garage, I used three quarter inch sharp rock. I wanted that to compress so it would provide structural rigidity to that trench around the garage. I didn't want it sinking or causing the, the garage to sink. Um, picking up a U-Haul trailer, that was for brush removal, and just junk removal in general. Uh, I got a friend helping me out, <laughs> John. <laughs> He's pretty cool. <laughs> he loved using this stuff. I found the best way to get people to help you is to say, I'll do the dirty work, you get to operate the fun machinery, and usually I got a yes. So there's me in the excavator. First thing was taking down a bunch of trees, so I needed to build that rock stream in the back, like I showed you on the, the plan map there, and there were trees that had raised the grade of the earth, so I thought I could just dig around these trees and knock them over like you see on YouTube. It's like no problem. I had a 7,000 pound excavator here, and I don't know, those roots, they would not come out no matter how far out I dug and the tree would not fall over. So I ended up chainsawing them down and that, that wasted three quarters of a day. If I would have known I had to chainsaw the dumb things, I wouldn't have been doing it on the clock on this thing where I was all I had was seven or eight days to do this whole thing. I would have dropped those prior and then rented the machinery, but whatever. Anyway, I'm working on these trees here. This one turned out to be bigger than I thought. More tree work. So so now we're starting on the French drain around the perimeter of the garage. Or I mean the, the outer perimeter French drain. 
I uh, tried doing the French drain technique, dude, uh, where he, he's got a guy in an excavator and he drops the dirt <clears throat> in the skid steer bucket. And we quickly found out a couple amateurs are not going to make that work. So I just started making piles all over the yard. This yard soon turns into just a muddy disaster zone. Absolute disaster. And there wasn't much I could do with it. We just didn't have a team of people. It was usually just me working, except a few of the weekend days. <clears throat> I had planned to put the sump pit right here. So I took marker pipe I or marker paint. I painted a line about 18 inches out. I did not want the excavator bucket hitting any of those piers I put in around the garage here to support it. I started the trench and I made it here and went down 24 inches. Well, in this front corner of the garage, I found out there is a big oak stump. It was like a three foot oak tree right here. I, I couldn't even dig through it. The 7,000 pound excavator couldn't even move it no matter what. I spent two hours on the dumb thing that I gave up. So I had to dig the pit or the sump pit way out here. So here's uh, coming around the back of the garage. You can see how many roots there are. Um, it was a disaster zone. I started making the berm here. This is the, as you saw, in the, if you look back to the plan, this is my berm. This is the French drain in the back. Coming along the um, what side is this? Oh, the west side of the garage. This is moving up to that tree clump in the front there. Just a ton of roots everywhere. Here's a picture, a close-up picture of the roots. More roots. There's a ton of cutting. Here's the pit I bought. That's me. That's my friend John. There's a six-foot sump pit. And uh, there's my stepson. Uh, it's, so we're, we had, I dug the hole with the excavator and I know uh, like French drain man and those guys they'll just get a skid steer with a 36 inch auger and do it it's a lot cleaner there's a lot less material removal that was an extra five hundred dollars and I dug it with the excavator and yeah it created a huge pile of dirt and I, of course I had to bell it you can't just go straight down at least I couldn't with my skills so it was a pretty big hole you'll see more as we go in so we're moving the pit in there this is a $600 pit I got at Menards. It's the same one that French Drain Man uses in Michigan. There's my Amazon cloth. I, I ringed it with a cloth and I put six inches of stone in the bottom. So it's a six and a half inch deep hole. And I drilled the bottom right here to like turn in, turn this into its own French drain. I wanted to dewater the ground down deep as I could get. So got her down in there, uh, put in some stone about I filled it up about halfway with stone, and then all this cloth went in and covered it up and made a burrito wrap French drain around that tank. And we're just getting it in position here. And you notice how much farther away from the garage I am than I planned. I had planned to put it right here, but there's a big oak stump in there, and I have uh, pictures of that I'll show to the stump. It's covered with mud. You really can't see it much, but the stump's right here. Uh, I left that alone, so I had to not even do a French drain here. The, this French drain um, comes in through here, and then the one around the front of the garage comes in around the stump like this and then enters right there. I'm filling with stone here, and the first thing you want to dig is the sump pit in any project like this. Don't go dig into your French drains too out far yet because you want a place to put the excavator and you want a place to put the waste dirt like here. Um, if you actually have two skid steers and they can keep up with the excavators it digs, fine. I didn't have that. So just more setting the sump pit here. I'm going to go a little faster. There's a lot to go through. So getting that thing covered is a picture of my waste dirt. I could fill this about uh, 15 yards, a 20 yard bin. They only let me fill it to three quarter full. Just more uh, putting the sump pit in here. The, I got my aggregate down there. That's me Just showing a picture. Here's the outer French drain. It's down to the, it only took 12 inches to get to the clay. This is the low part of the yard here, the, the west side. The back of the garage here, we're starting to clean up the pit here, or the trench. You can see that some, a lot of the roots have been cut now. Uh, it's pretty hot this time of the year, too. So here's my berm right here. 
I'm also, I had dug a rock stream back here. I'll have more pictures. Uh, here's my rock stream in the back now. So I dug this one. I haven't gotten rid of the roots yet, but I dug it a little too deep. So I had to fine tune that to make it into a nice pretty rock stream. Yeah, here's the just cutting roots I think I was doing there. Working on the tree there. Here's a picture of the clay. These balls of clay are about a foot in diameter. It was once you got, when, when I got to 18 inches down, there was gray clay, and when I got to about four to six feet down, there's just just there's this crazy stuff. I could have sold it to a potter. It was like pure pure gray clay. I don't even know the name of it, but it was amazing how hard it um, dried. I, I kept a few chunks to dry. It's pretty crazy stuff. So here's Hans standing next to a clay pile. Here's the French drain around the 24-inch deep one around the front of my garage. And the excavator kind of makes a mess as you make a corner here. It removes a hell of a lot more dirt than would have been if I was hand digging. But hand digging took forever, so I just said screw it. And But it, uh, it took a lot more aggregate to fill these big voids that the excavator make as it made as it dug. So more work there. Here's the stump I had to go around. The pit was supposed to have been right here. That did not work out. The stump would not move. So the front French drain line comes here and the rear one comes here. And also the downspouts go into solid that comes in through here too. So um, Here's a quick shot of the rock stream I started making in the front. Go back. In, in the beginning of the video when I showed you the plan this is the front rock stream so more supplies I got my round rock and I got my sharp rock right here I used the sharp rock for the French drain the deep one around the garage and the round rock for the one that went around the wide perimeter of the yard and a waste pile of dirt I had the I had piles of waste dirt everywhere I couldn't even fit it all in the bin I had to get a second bin um, more piles of junk dirt there just this is when it starts looking like a bomb goes off. I was exhausted. Uh, I had dirt everywhere. Everywhere the skid steers and the excavator drove, they ruined the turf. So I was making a big job for me versus uh, French drain man. He's got a team. He comes in. He lays down plywood, and they keep things pretty clean. That would have been awesome, but I didn't spring for the plywood until later in the project when it got really muddy. And I didn't have enough. I didn't, I didn't have two skid steers and a team of people. So here's a shot of the destruction I have created. Um, my rock stream. My wife did this. I had to create ramps across the French drain. So this is my outer French drain. Here it goes all the way around the back and around the other side there. The the ring French drain around the immediate garage here. The stump I couldn't go around. Uh, and then this bit of land right here is 20 inches higher than this bit of land. So as the French drain come around, came around through here, I had to go to about 36 inches deep here to get slope from the 12 inch deep French drain there. And that was so deep, I did not want to uh, do the burrito wrap stone method. So I shortcutted it and I just bought 20 feet of that Easy Drain, the NDS Easy Drain stuff from Menards, and that worked out pretty good for this 20 feet. The 20 feet took me out to about right here. The, the whole French drain was about 170 feet total. This French drain around the garage is about 130 feet total. More supplies, a Toro Dingo. I think if you're going to get a skid steer or a ride-on, get a bigger one like a Vermeer. Another shot of my destruction. It looked worse than it looks in these pictures, I tell you. It was just, oh my God, there's just ripped up lawn and mud everywhere. And this is, it all got ripped up. It's all muddy. And think about this garage is sitting on a column of mud. If I had not put seven inch um, cement columns sunk into the clay at 18 points around this garage, at this point here, it would have squished down and that thing would have dropped. It would probably would have caved in this thing. So, and here's my 12 inch French, 12 inch deep French drain. Now it's all cleaned up. You can see the 
roots are gone. More picks of the destruction here. I didn't think I had to put in my temporary sump pit, and I had a rain, and oh my god, it, one little teeny rain at the August 1st-ish, what is this date here? Oh, July 29, after I'd been going for four or five days, filled up the whole damn thing. So I had to pump it out, I had the pump going here, that was an old sump pump, and you can see the water coming out there to empty it. So I got it empty, and then I started filling in, so now I'm starting to put stuff back together, lay out my fabric around the garage. I got fabric going to the front of the garage there, the slotted pipe, and just start putting stuff together. The solid pipe, this is the solid pipe for the downspouts. We're on the west side of the garage. And there's corrugate or the, the slotted pipe under there, under the solid here that the downspouts go to. More shots of that. Oh no, I guess this is the slotted here. And I haven't yet laid the solid from this downspout. The solid was going to come through here and then into this Y here. And there's another downspout on the other side of the garage. Here's my front rock stream again. And I, I'm kind of anal retentive. So originally we just put plain rocks. And I went through there later in the fall and replaced it with colored rocks that I gathered by hand. That took forever. I finally got smart. I went to Menards and I bought a whole ton of cheap plywood. And I sold the stuff after. I just used it, and then I pressure sprayed it up and cleaned it. I had to buy it, though, because it started raining after the 1st of August, and it just it made it unworkable. I couldn't even drive the darn machinery. I, I wasn't getting any traction, nothing. It was destroying everything, so I just had to plunk down the cash for this. More shot of the mud there. Digging out my... This, it was tough to get this to not, you know, you're so close to the garage, you got to be super careful there. That was nerve-wracking, doing all the digging. Here's an earlier shot of the sump pit as I wrapped up the stone down there. I made it into its own little French drain. A shot of the rock stream in front being built. Another shot of the garage. Just, uh, yeah, the pictures are a little out of order because I pulled some of these off of Facebook, but that's fine. Whatever. Hopefully, if you guys have questions, just, you know, this, oh, what a mess. I had, oh, my God, I had so much mess here. So, starting to fill it in now. I had it all burrito wrapped going into the pit here. Um, and then I topped it with just some three-quarter inch crushed. I'm going to do a driveway next year. And here's some of the old the holes from the garage foundation work where the piers were. I kept well away from those when I dug the French drain. And here's how I'm covering the French drain. I am not good at all at landscaping. I should have cleaned up this line better. I cleaned it up later a little bit, but I just started doing a rough layout of a walkway I wanted to my back door right here. Put landscape fabric down, put rock, started burrito wrapping all this stuff. I shoveled out all the sod here and put landscape fabric down. Um, another shot of the destruction. I had I had to pick up all this junk and the, this thing is already full. I had to buy it or rent another one and fill that up with all this stuff. Picture starting to bury all the lines into the sump pit there. Went through a lot of Gatorade. A ton of Gatorade. It was so hot. Rock stream in front. Starting to build a little bridge there for my lawnmower. It's it's very muddy here. This whole this is next to the swamp and the bike path right here where the culvert goes under. This is the wettest area of the whole yard. And I didn't even really protect this with a, a French drain. There's no good way of doing that because all the water comes here anyway. It'd just be like a recirculation pump. I did do a little trench here. This rock stream acts as a French drain because it's lower than the surface, so it does pull water out of the ground. It's, I see that happening. Um, I am starting to get the rock mulch in here better now. And the front I just left like that because, like I said, I'm doing a driveway some other year. Uh, working on the other side of the garage. More rock mulch. Another shot of the sump pit area being cleaned up. Putting in the rock mulch there. I'm exhausted. 
and more printing up. I have better pen. Oh, here's the easy drain I used where I had to bury it super deep. With that 36 inch deep trench going into the sump pit. This is this was the easiest way to do it. There's my pump. Got it at uh, Menards, 7,200 gallons a minute. That it's a hoss. That that kicks out some serious water. This is still I had still had my temporary pit in, or pump in there. I had to keep that in there for the whole project because this thing would fill up constantly. Uh, yeah, just more stuff. Getting the rock mulch put in. There's my sump discharge. You know, I actually started uh, filling in a trench before I d remembered to install this. I was so mad. I had to dig the thing out again. Oh my gosh, I made so many mistakes on this thing that I had to like redig or do something or whatever. Pain. Maybe here's the rock mulch coming together. I'm working on the easy drain here. Um, NDS recommends wrapping easy drain in an additional layer of filter fabric if you're in clay soil, which is what I was in. So I bought some four foot wide, nice, this is nice stuff, nice filter fabric from uh, Menards and I wrapped the 20 feet in that stuff and then it looked like that when I was done. So that keeps the clay out of the system. Here's a picture of my six foot deep sunt pit. I have two lines coming in so far. There's going to be a total of three in the end, and that's my temporary sump pump there. Here's the easy drain coming out of the deep section. You know, it really doesn't look three feet deep, but it is. And now I start to bury it. My easy drain's coming out here. I got my sump discharge two inch, two inch flex irrigation hose there. And uh, the French drain goes this way. I just got it laying over there for nothing. But the um, the dis sump discharge is right here. And I just kind of let it sit there for a while. I'm starting to fill in. There's the easy drain there. And then the easy drain finally goes off to here and then hooks up with uh, the breeder wrap section there. So there's my easy drain. And then I what I did is I ran the easy drain in them to a traditional French drain where I lay the fabric out, fill it with the put the slotted pipe in there and then fill it with stone. So that's where I'm going to make the connection. I overlapped it enough so that roots don't get in there, I hope. And that's the start of that. So, And then the coming around the other side of the garage is the end. So 170 feet total of this outer French drain here. And I had already, it looks like I had already finished uh, some of the rock mulching here, the inner one. And then you can see like the downspouts. These I just ran directly into 4-inch, and then they go down into the 24-inch deep French drain under all that rock mulch there. Starting to fill it up. At the beginning, I put a clean-out. And I know French Drain Man doesn't put a clean-out. Um, I did. I, I don't know if it's going to get full of roots or what, so I just put it there in case I got to run an auger and clean that thing out. I put a little bit of gravel in the bottom. Not much. I'm using four slots Prinsco pipe from Menards. It's probably not as good as the Boffman tile, I'm sure, but hopefully it works. So there we go around the back of the yard. And I'm starting to fill it out with the, the inch and a half round rock all the way through. Yeah, it's just shot of my rock mulch. And now I'm making a connection with the easy drain here that's wrapped in the filter fabric. I use the Toro Dingo there to um, fill it. Sometimes a wheelbarrow. It depends on if I was in tight quarters, whether I could use the skid steer or not. Got it all full. All full of stone, looking nice. I start wrapping it up here. This is a lot of work. Oh, my gosh. Most days I was working alone. Starting to cut that, cut it or trim it back. Get the clean out built. I was using plywood constantly because it was still muddy. That smile does not mean I'm happy. I'm exhausted. Rock stream, just a pick of the hole. Uh, that's my wood shop in there. So I'm st I made the connection here with the easy drain that goes underneath to the sump pit there. And I get the then yeah the sump pit that's uh. 
planned it here, and now I have a sump pit like literally in the middle of my yard. So I had to figure out how to make that look decorative. I'll get to that later. But oh, there's a shot of the back of my house. I got it all rock mulched. Oh, yeah, I was taking all my extra inch and a half round rock, and I was using it in the back of my house. So I had a lot of round rock left. I Sometimes I'd order too little, sometimes I order too much. It's like, I don't know, the pros really know what they're doing. I wasn't the best at ordering the right amount of materials. Here's the bigger Vermeer I rented. It's a 925. Now that thing had the power. That was way better than the Dingo. That was a, <clears throat> you can see it compared to the size of a minivan. That thing had power. Awesome. So there's my round rock. I had to use knee pads. So I used multiple wheelbarrows. I sold my extra round rock on Craigslist to a dude. He came and picked it up. Uh, and so now the cleanup. I mean, it's uh, things are starting to get covered up here. I bought a special mix of dirt to cover the French drain, like the top three inches. I didn't save my sod. I didn't uh, rent a sod cutter. I used a 50-50 sand dirt mix. And my brother came and helped here. We're starting to figure out what the heck to do with this. We had to dig a tr I forgot to dig the trench for the electrical. So, of course, I had to start all over in this area and redig a trench for the cabling. That was fun to take apart. Starting to figure out how to clean this whole place up here. You can see my special uh, high drainage mix here. And this is based on some document I found on ndspro.com. Built a little another clean out here. So it's actually a, a drain grate. And, but I put it up high enough so it doesn't take in water. I, I know a French drainman says don't use a basin in your uh, French drain system. So I did put it up high, but it's, it's really just for a clean out. But actually, I've had one flood since where the water came up so high it was going in that thing. Yeah, just more electrical work we're doing here for the sump pit. Um, there's the trench there. Everywhere I, this, it was so wet after that first week that I had to put plywood wherever I want. It doesn't look that wet, but it's wet. All my extra plywood is cleaned up. I sold it. It's good. I got spent like 14 bucks a sheet. I got back five bucks a sheet. I started selling all my extra pipe. Now you can see the yard is getting cleaned up here. Um, I bought nine yards of dirt to regrade the lawn. Here's my sump discharge. I just did an elbow. I wasn't quite sure how to do it. And I started testing the thing. It's like I turned the pump on and it spurted out the sides. It's, I had a grate on there. That didn't work so well. So I had to fix all that. But I finally figured that out. Um, here's a regrading. I had spread part of the nine yards of dirt here. I filled in all kinds of holes there. Here's my clean out. I just put rock in there and brick. And I made it all at the height so that my riding mower can go right over or any more and it will never hit those components so that I do have a clean out in the middle of my yard but you really don't notice it and then I planted grass on this high drainage soil mix here and here's you can see a better shot of my uh, grate here I'm getting everything clean now in front of the garage around the sump pit and stuff I'm starting to figure out how I want to make this look uh, so I started drawing out a line here and putting in a paver base and stuff and you'll see later kind of like seating this is what I was going to do so it, I don't know if it looks stupid or not but I didn't know what to do so I just brought the bricks way out and I rock mulched it and then I put some boulders there to make it look good and I brought a mock rock or a fake rock to go over the electrical here yeah so that's how it looks and then I put a switched a uh, lighted switch on the inside of the garage so I knew if the circuit to the pump was active yeah cut it off and then put a fake rock over this waterproof thing and that's basically how I protected the electrical on the other side of the garage I made a sidewalk I've always wanted a dry way to walk to the store it's always been super super muddy um, finally I can go there without getting all full of junk there's my door there's a kind of yeah I'm not the most artistic guy in the world, so that's about as good as you're going to get if I'm doing the job. Um, here's my front rock stream, and 
and the little bridge we made over the rock stream. Now I got the real pump installed, the 7,200 gallon a minute sewage pump. Um, we got three inputs, like this is the garage French drain and solid pipe system from the downspouts, and then this input was from the the outer French drain around the whole yard. So it's actually starting to drain here too. You can see water coming through. And here's the mock rock I put down over the electrical. I'll put another boulder here later. And I found a boulder in the woods. I didn't buy any boulders or cobblestone for the rock streams. I found it all. Um, this was one heavy, heavy rock. I estimated six to 800 pounds. So I started using a cant hook to um, move that thing. You can kind of compare it to a full-size tire on a trailer there. Or my size 13 foot. That was heavy. Oh my god. Pressure sprayed it off to make it look pretty. Decided on that side and I put it right there. So that's how I decorated the sump pit. Yay. Anyway, so you can see the grass is coming in now. This is much later in the year. I started July 26th. This is September 25th. This took a long time to do all this stuff because I'm, I'm picky. I'm really picky. Um, here's a picture of the system in action. Now, I'll have videos of the system in action, but here's some still pictures. Uh, this is the rock stream in front during a heavy rain. This is the output of the culvert under my driveway. And here's like a lake during a heavy rain. This is the bike path over here that you see in the plan in the first few pictures I show. The culvert's under there. It's full to the top, a 16-inch culvert full to the top. It was crazy. Here's a picture of the lake. This is after the system is installed, actually. And this is right over the French drain. This is the one time I said that my I had a clean out right here, and that's a great. I thought the water would never get that high, and it did within weeks of this stupid thing being finally installed. Um, another picture of the lake there. This is all on the west side of my garage. And my U, my U here, I actually thought it was high enough. It's not. That that rained so hard, it was backfilling into my system and I don't have a check valve on there because I did that on purpose to keep the pipe clear in the winter so it went um, uh, freeze but it worked by the next morning this is what I saw the lake here which the whole thing was flooded this was all clear it was done it's pretty cool and the pump was pumping out in the morning um, this is the rear rock stream. I, this is kind of a silly. You'll have to go to the other videos uh, of the, the water during the storm. But check ahead and you'll see what I'm talking about in those videos better. This is the rock stream in the back. It had totally filled with water. Um, so this is the back of the garage. This is the French drain here that rings the, around the outer yard. This is the berm right here. The berm goes all the way around the whole garage. And then here's the rock stream I dug in back. So at this point, uh, July 27th, there was not yet a rock stream. These pictures are a little out of order. That's fine. But um, you'll see what this turns into later. Here's after that storm. Uh, here's another picture of me during building of the rock stream. So this is uh, testing it with a hose. I was leveling it out because I wanted to start putting cobblestone in there. I laid down landscape fabric, put the cobblestone in, and I'm actually filling it back in so that it didn't have any standing water. I didn't want mosquitoes growing in there. Now my front rock stream, I actually started printing up. I got rid of the plain rocks. I used them for the rear rock stream, and for this one, I used colored rocks that I had found elsewhere. Here's the rear rock stream. I had landscape fabric and I just started using rocks that I found from the project around my yard and then I had to f uh, finally go to a construction site and go through their fill piles and pull more rocks out. I didn't want to buy any so working on the rock stream more in the back. Just more rock stream construction. This is the front rock stream. And this is how I would go get rocks and clean them. Yeah, I know most people would just order three by four, three to four inch cobblestone, and I like I just 
I had th this project ballooned from an estimate of $3,500 to $11,000. See one of my last videos for the materials and the final cost and for a whole summary of that. This is the pile that I got all my cobblestone and boulders from. I went through a lot of boulders just to make things look pretty. So here's the rear rock stream now looking a lot better. More rear rock stream here. Again, the French drains here, the berms there, rock stream here. After building this rock stream, I pretty much figured out I probably didn't need this berm, but I could always get rid of it later. So more of the rear rock stream. Starting to look a lot better. I trimmed up all the landscape fabric around here. Here's the trees that I had dropped in the very beginning. Here's the input to the culvert in the front of the garage. I prettied this up with uh, colored rocks and then the output of the front rock stream. More of the front rock stream. And that's it. So everything I showed you was around this garage. The front rock streams here, the rear rock streams back here. And thanks for watching.